Time to talk royal stuff, things to do with the House of Windsor and those who refuse to be part of the working House of Windsor. None other than Michael Cole, the former BBC correspondent, who joins us now from merry old England. Great man, how are you? I'm very well, Paul, and it's a great pleasure to be back with you uh, and your viewers. Now, let's talk about uh, Thomas Markle, of course, Meghan Markle's father. He's basically shut out, obviously, of her life because, uh, well... Yes, he said a few things behind her back, but in some ways he's doing that because she won't talk to him because the presumption is that he's just not impressive enough. And now he's doubling down that he'd like to see his grandkids. Yeah, he says it's very cruel of Meghan and her husband, Prince Harry, to have kept the children away from him. He said this very forcefully and I have to say, I have to agree with him. He's 79. He's not in the best of health. He lives over the border. There he is with his daughter. He helped her to get into her acting career. He was a quite distinguished and well-respected uh, lighting engineer in television. And he was helpful to her. But she hasn't allowed him to see her children. And he says that's very cruel. And... You know, this couple, uh, Meghan and Harry, they talk about love, they talk about support, they talk about being kind to people. But, you know, charity starts at home, and charity in the biblical sense means love. And in their own families, Harry doesn't talk to any member of his family apart from the two daughters of Prince Andrew, that's princesses Beatrice and Eugenie, and she, Meghan, doesn't talk to anybody apart from her mother and one niece. So here are these two apostles of love, lightness, and beauty. Uh, they can't even talk to their own families. So I think that's a pretty poor show. The man is obviously looking at the end of his life. Uh, he's even contemplating doing something which it is possible to do in California. Uh, there are laws which allow grandparents the right to see their grandchildren. In this country, in Britain, you can get that, but you have to go to law on each specific case. He says he doesn't want to do that, but I'm in sympathy with him. And he made these remarks in a breakfast program here. By coincidence, I was invited to go on that program for other reasons I couldn't be there. But had I been there, I would have supported him roundly because I think any grandfather, and I'm one, uh, is entitled to see uh, his or her grandchildren. It seems that, and, you know, I, it always breaks my heart when people use children in a wider dispute between uh, a couple that breaks up, or in this case, um, you know, a, a child and their parent. It is a particular dagger <laughs> through the heart, and it is something that I think that, in some ways people will live to regret because when they become grandparents, they understand, you know, what that means. They understand um, the sacrifices that their grandparents had made in the same way that when you become a parent, you become aware of the sacrifices your parents had made. Do you think, and again, none of us are going to get inside her head, but it is quite plausible that she will well and truly live to regret the decision to deny her grandchildren, uh, sorry, his grandchildren, the chance to see him very wise what you're saying there and i think there is actually nothing more contemptible than weaponizing children and using them as bargaining chips or as counters in some sort of nasty game uh, families are families they do fall out they're sometimes fault on either side uh, thomas markle made a mistake of collaborating with one photographer in some photographs which were supposed to look like candy shots but he had conspired with the photographer to do that. Well, that isn't a hanging offence as far as I'm concerned. He made a mistake, but my goodness, who hasn't? And who hasn't that this wonderful pair from Montecito in California, can they say, hand on their heart, that they've never made a mistake? I think they have. And when you see that they're on uh, bad terms, on non-speakers, as we would say in Britain, they're not on speaking terms with most of their family, you have to ask, well, who is at fault? And I think uh, towards the end of somebody's life, and he's had, I think, one or two heart attacks, he's not a well man. He's just over the border. He lives in Mexico. He could be up in Los Angeles and Montecito, probably in a five-hour, six-hour drive. Um, I think people actually should show some compassion and some kindness 
and actually find it in their hearts to give this man what he wants, which is to see his two grandchildren, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. It's not much to ask, is it, Paul? No, this is indeed, uh, you know, for a couple, it's all about compassion and forgiveness and all the rest of it. You would think that perhaps becoming a living version of it might be the best way of showing it rather than just talking, uh, you know, a uh, quote unquote good game. So there's a job available if you would like it. And look, to be honest, you, you know, if you applied, <laughs> you'd automatically get it where you could become somebody who works quite intimately with William and Kate, with the Prince and Princess of Wales. What would the CEO of that household have to do? Well, uh, have to report directly to the Prince and Princess of Wales, uh, Prince William and, and Princess Kate. Uh, it's quite an interesting development because um, Princess Diana, William's beloved late mother, um, she was complained about the grey men who were running her life from Buckingham Palace, the courtiers, in other words. And quite clearly, uh, William and Kate are striking out here. They want to appoint an executive um, uh, in their own household, who will boss a staff of about 60 people and report directly to them. They want to strike their own gong here. They want to not be beholden and controlled by Buckingham Palace. And I think it's quite an admirable thing to do. They want to make sure that things are done in the way they want to do. He is the heir apparent. He's the heir to the throne. At some stage in the future, after his uh, father's reign, he will come to the throne and he wants to be up and running and he wants to run things his own way. And let him do that because, OK, he may make some mistakes. He may do things which is not the Buckingham Palace way. But who's, not, who's to say that that is not a good idea? I think it's to be commended and supported. And uh, instead of going through royal circles, they've hired a headhunting firm to find the right candidate. You and I, I don't think, Paul, are available for it. But if you were to work for them, I think they would be a rather good pair because they've got good ideas, they're young, they're uh, adventurous, and in, in recent polls in America, Prince William uh, is the most trusted man of, of, of public figures, far more trusted uh, than the two probable candidates for the next uh, presidential election, Mr. Trump and, and Mr. Biden. So that's a good beginning, a good solid uh, foundation upon which to build. And I think it's a good idea. Why is Kate not with William uh, on his trip to New York? Why, why did Kate not go with him, you mean? Yes. Well, I think uh, it's very, very simple and it's very human. Uh, they have three children. Uh, Prince George, uh, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis, uh, 10, 8, and 5. And the Waleses, as we'll call them now, have a strict rule. Uh, one of them has to be at home, if at all possible, when the children come home from school. Now, you and I have been in a very high-pressure profession all our lives, and we've spent more days away from home than we care to think about, and we've missed the school plays, and we've missed... Uh, the Christmas concerts. And we've done all that in the name of our profession, working in television. And of course, it's a very demanding mistress. And it's the same for the prince. They, he's, they, he's got, they've got uh, fantastically busy schedules, but they try very, very hard wherever possible to have one of them at least at home. And that's a good idea. We don't like the idea of latch, latchkey kids for ordinary families. And I, it's good to think that at Adelaide Cottage, where they live in Windsor Great Park, the same rule applies. So I think that's to be commended. He has gone to New York as part of his Earthshot initiative. He's doing great things for the environment, backing schemes which are going to improve our world. He's been over there dabbling around in oyster beds, which they're trying to revive uh, off the northeast coast there. Uh, and he didn't actually need her to be there. So what has she been doing? She's been down in the West Country, uh, Yeovilton in Somerset, some of your viewers may know it. Uh, that's one of the two Royal Navy air bases because she's the Commodore in chief of the fleet air arm. And she's been seeing the people down there, uh, looking at the helicopters, meeting the people and trying on a big old fashioned May West. And she was rather taken aback when uh, it was inflated with a bang. <laughs> she took it in good part. Uh, and uh, but they had to actually uh, deflate it a little bit so that she could, <laughs> um, could get it off her head. But she kept her beautiful long curls. You've seen this new haircut. It's called the mermaid look. 
I think that's quite a good name for it. Uh, and she took it all in good part and was laughing. So she's at home, he's away, uh, and they're at home for the kids. Now, I'll be honest, uh, Princess Charlotte is a big hit in my household, particularly with my, uh, well, obviously with my little girls, and a big uh, hit <laughs> in our office here as well. Now, uh, you posit that there is obviously a path to her potentially becoming queen, but she stands a better chance than other high-profile, slightly to the left or slightly to the right of the succession line in the past. Exactly. So you have uh, Prince William. He is the heir apparent. He will be the next one, all things being equal, to be the monarch. Then comes his uh, eldest son, uh, uh, George, who's 10. He's the heir presumptive. Now, in the old days, uh, Prince Louis, who's five, would have le leaped over uh, Princess Charlotte. He would have been the next in line because he's a man. But very, very, very sensibly, the late Queen decided, and it was agreed by the Commonwealth, including your Prime Minister and New Zealand, everybody was taken into uh, account, and everybody gleefully agreed that primogeniture uh, running through the male line would be abandoned after centuries of centuries. So it didn't happen with Princess Anne. She was superseded by her younger brothers in the line of succession. But that no longer happens, and it shouldn't, because if you look in history, Britain and Australia, we've had some wonderful queens. I mean, Queen Victoria uh, is one, Queen Elizabeth, uh, who, in fact, uh, her funeral was uh, exactly a year ago today, the 19th of September. I realise it's the 20th in Australia now. But it's still it's still the anniversary here today, the 19th. So uh, there's nothing wrong with queens. We've all done rather well with queens during the queen, the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, of course, the great adventurers uh, Drake and Raleigh and people like that went out to uh, discover the world and conquer the world. They didn't quite get as far as Australia. That was left to Captain Cook uh, and, and and other intrepid sailors. But uh, queens have always been quite good for this country and quite good for the Commonwealth. So it's a good thing. I think Princess Charlotte's a beautiful lo looking little girl. And what I understand, Paul, and I have this on very good authority, is that the Waleses are bringing up their children in a very, very normal way. There's, uh, there's strict structures, there's discipline, uh, nobody gets away with anything. Because I don't know what you agree, you're, you, you're a father much more recently than I am. My, my, my daughter's now 50 years old. But when, when, when I was a, a, a young father, if you will, uh, children like structures, they like discipline, they like to know where they are. Uh, they don't like uh, too loose a regime uh, because uh, you know, odd things happen. They like to know where they are. And fortunately, the Waleses see it that way. They, they're a loving parents their hands-on parents, but they have their standards and they, they keep to them. I've got two girls, five and eight. Wish me luck for the next few years. <laughs> Lovely to talk to you, Michael. All the best. Pleasure. Always.